Well, 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 hello everyone. I'm here with a, a very important announcement to me, personally. And, uh, well, it's that I made a game. In the last couple of months, uh, I forget the exact time I started it, it was around April some point. But finally, I was able to create a game, a video game. And I was able to, you know, make it and upload it to Steam. And it's actually going to be for sale on August 1st. And, uh, yeah. So, I thought that was pretty cool. I just kind of wanted to share it all with you guys, you know, kind of announce it here. So if any of y'all are interested, I could kind of explain uh, what it is, direct you to it, and, and all that good stuff. Um, first of all, it is $3.99. So it's uh, really cheap. Personally, I wanted it to be like a flat dollar amount, but Steam like requires you to put 99, it looks like. So that's the thing. Anyway, uh, let me tell you about the game by uh, basically bringing it up here. So this is, is the game. I call it War of Belrook. Uh, you, you can't really see my, the, the title back there. You can see like it says Rook there, and it says Bell over here. Put it together as Belrook, right? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to play a bunch of it. I'm just going to kind of do the first little bit so you can kind of see. What, but it, it's got this normal format. You got the uh, the start, load, preferences, about, question, loading has the, the different things here. Um, and then, you know, help just tells you about the, the various buttons to use. Preferences, you have the, the text speed, um, auto forward stuff, whether you want it to be a windowed or full screen, um, and then the voice volume, which comes into play. Because I... Myself voiced all of it, and uh, there is 5.7, 5.9, not 5.9, sorry, 10, 10.7 or 10.9 um, hours of a voice recording put into it for uh, each and every uh, dialogue thing that occurs, anyway. It's all me doing it. So you can turn it off, you can adjust the volume slider however you want to increase it, decrease it, anything like that. But let's, let's go ahead and start. And I turned it off since I'm talking about it. So this is the beginning. Um, as you can see, it is, you know, a text-based game, right? So that there's not any graphics to it. It's all going to be text, and it's like a visual novel. Uh, you read it or have the, the audio read it to you. you click, and it advances to the next screen where there's, you know, a lot more. And as you can see, uh, this one, uh, you know, it's just kind of here, because this is like the introduction. It tells you what the games are going to be about and how to kind of play it a little bit. This one gives you the lore of what's happening and all that. And then finally, uh, this screen is the one that really determines the first choice you're going to make. So I designed the game where it has six different paths you can start out by taking. Um, there's the soldier path, the peasant task, a path, the mage, the assassin, the king, and the cleric. And each of them play differently. Because um, the king, you're basically just going to be making decisions about you know, how to do things during this war that's going to be occurring. You're not going to be like on the front lines doing anything or that kind of stuff. Um, as a cleric, you'll be healing people. As a mage, you're going to be using offensive magic. An assassin is going to be sneaking around trying to take up a target. A peasant will be going about their daily life during the war. And then a soldier is, of course, going to be going on the front line. So some of them have a little more freedom than the other because, for example, the soldier, um, they're going to be with an army and they're going to have to kind of follow what the army does and says. So they're going to be moving from place A to place B uh, at the army's behest. And they're going to have like, very little choice that uh, is personal of them. But it does impact how the story progresses, and at least the ending specifically. Yeah, uh, but... There's a lot of different things here. Uh, the mage, for example, it allows you to choose different kind of magic to use. And some of the magic is similar to how the story plays out, but some of them change exactly how it goes. Uh, and yeah. And with the mage and the cleric specifically, um, I made it like so it has kind of like a mana system. Where like you start with, uh, I think the mage has 200 and the cleric has 300 mana. Or it might be the opposite, I forget. Uh, but each spell takes a portion of your mana, and if you're out of mana, things can go poorly for you. Um, but if you manage your mana properly, the story progresses in a different way, right? Kind of stuff like that. Um, but anyway, you, so here you basically choose which path you want to take. 
and I could I could go further um, than this, but I really don't want to because at that point it kind of gets into spoiler territory. But each one starts out by telling you, hey, you're this class, this is what you do, this is currently the setting around you, and, and all that kind of stuff. And that, that's kind of what uh, is going on here. So let's switch back to my uh, normal screen here. Oop. Normal screen here, so I can kind of give you a little more information about it. Um, so it, it has 72 endings um, from all of them. And it's all, all text-based, like I said. So you go through the endings and find out you know, different ones. There's a variety of, of different endings for each class. Some of them are similar, depending upon what you choose and do. Um, like, for example, the mage class, which has you know, different magic classes. You can choose from fire, water, and darkness. Um, or dark magic to use. And I limited it there because I didn't want to make like electricity and all this kind of stuff and just have it be a huge like kind of thing. Because like I said, the, the thing's very similar. So let's say uh, you're a, a fire mage and one of the choices is you can cast a firebolt at something. Um, you cast a firebolt and that's what happens. Uh, similarly to that, if you choose the water mage, you can choose to cast their thing, which is an ice bolt. And that'll basically do the same exact thing at the same exact time as what the Fire Mage did. So it just kind of gives you a choice to be fire, ice, or darkness, but their, uh, their abilities are slightly different in what they do. So there is some difference there, but uh, for, for the most part, whether you pick ice or fire or darkness, the story follows the same path. As long as you choose the correct um, I guess choices to go down a path that leads you to not running out of mana right away um, or I guess maybe potentially running out of mana right away uh, stuff like that because you know it's, it's hard to say this all without spoiling stuff but yeah well, like I said, there's a bunch of different endings um, some of them are things like you made a wrong choice you're just dead uh, you, just, you just die there's a couple of those out there not too many I think I, I think I made like one or two, at least one per character, where it's just if you choose this option or you go down this path, you're basically dooming your character to die. Uh, just because it, it's kind of humorous to have at particular points, because you're like, yeah, that played exactly how I thought it was going to be. But other times, stuff that you think would be suicidal or deadly turns out to be amazing and great. And uh, that's what I like. I kind of do. It was interesting, but each each class I think has roughly the same amount of endings. The peasant one has a little more than everyone else, uh, and that's simply because of how the peasant one goes, because uh, it has more freedom than the other ones. You know, because you're a peasant, and you know you're not taking part in a war, you're not running anything, you're just living your life. So there's some choices that you can make that end up allowing you to have a different ending based upon that stuff. It gives you a little more freedom, uh, even though you're a peasant, you know. But yeah, it, it, I think it's cool. I made it. It's, it's cute. But uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to announce it to y'all so you could check it out if you wanted to. Uh, like I said, it is $3.99 on Steam. And what I showed you is basically what it is, y'all. It's text on a background. You choose choices, and it takes you down different paths, and you arrive at an ending. There are some that I view as, like, the true ending. Like, this is the one that's, like, the best ending you could get for this character. Um, that kind of stuff. But, eh. Yeah, so that's kind of the thing. Uh, I do plan to make another game that's not a text-based choose-your-own-adventure game like this one is. Uh, what I want to do is make a, a game kind of like if you've ever played or seen played like vampire survivors or something like that where it's like you control a character who's like centered on the screen and monsters come at you and you use various abilities to fight them off i want to make like a pixel art kind of game like that um so i've been going around and getting pictures of like grass for references to turn it into pixel uh like objects and stuff like that. Uh, the, the biggest difficulty I feel for that 
making this new game that I want to make is making the animations for the characters. Because the backgrounds, they're going to be pretty simple, I think. Uh, at least the way that I'm going to be going about doing them, and in theory, having them work. Uh, but it's hard to make and animate pixel art characters, at least for me so far. Um, I, I've done a little bit of it. Uh, and it's just, I can't get very detailed, because uh, I'm just not an artistic person like that. But once I have some stuff to work with, I think it would be nice to be able to make that game as well and to release that. And, and actually, I have other games planned as well if I can get that one made, because I can reuse some assets from that one to make things like platformers, or I can make a uh, uh, sort of like a tower defense kind of game with that, those assets, you know. It's reusing like the, the pixel assets that I made for other games to have them be different like game type things, you know? Uh, kind of stuff like that, but that's what I want to do. I don't know how many months that stuff's going to take, if I'll even complete it, because, uh, it, like I said, uh, it's going to be complicated. And, yeah, always, always having to deal with artwork is what's, you know, my limiting factor, I feel. Because I, I can program stuff myself. I can come up with a, a decent-ish story and lay out for things and plan things out and come up with ideas. But my main, like, hurdle to creating games at this point is artwork and doing so just rough it is rough yeah but anyway to end things up i do have a link to the steam store page uh, war of bell Rook, in the description of the video here and uh like i said it's going to be released august 1st and uh check it out yeah let me know what you think uh Leave a review of the game if you get it. Let me know what you think is cool, what you think sucks, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Seems fun. Thank you all for uh, listening to me. Catch you all next time. Bye-bye.